Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to this morning's reflection. It was um, beautifully tranquil as I walked through the city this morning, although eerily quiet, of course. But just a moment ago, a trumpet started busking outside the church. He's playing very beautifully, so my words this morning, I hope, will have a gentle background accompaniment. And I'm speaking this morning in praise of ingenuity. I saw an absolutely amazing item on that wonderful nature program, Autumn Watch, the other day. And Chris Packham, in introducing this, said that it would blow our minds. And it did indeed blow my mind and started me thinking about ingenuity. And I'm about to describe to you something totally amazing. You need to imagine a plant, a healthy green plant, which gets attacked by a caterpillar, which starts eating it. And now I didn't know this was possible, but the plant immediately detects that it is being eaten. And through a quite a complicated process, which I won't attempt to describe, it starts to release a chemical called jasmonic acid, which tastes really horrible, apparently. It happens very gradually, but the idea is that the caterpillar, while it is eating, starts thinking, oh, actually, this doesn't taste very nice, and as a result, it decides to push off elsewhere. It's a defense mechanism, and very clever indeed. But that is only the beginning of the story, because that jasmonic acid in the plant in turn releases something called green leaf volatiles. And if they sound complicated, I'd like to tell you that you already have experienced them. If you have ever enjoyed the smell of freshly cut grass or the smell when you walk into a woodland, you are smelling green leaf volatiles. And these chemicals, these volatile chemicals, can actually be detected by other adjacent plants and they cause those plants also to trigger their own defense mechanisms. So if the caterpillar goes to another adjacent plant, it will discover that that also doesn't taste very nice. So the original plant is actually protecting the whole of its little colony. But even more than that, it isn't just the human nose that can detect these volatile chemicals. Other creatures can as well, including parasitic wasps. Um, so a wasp nearby will smell the volatile and will be attracted to the plant and then, lo and behold, will discover the offending caterpillar and will be able to take it off and eat it. So, in short, scientists have recently demonstrated that plants actually communicate with other plants and with animals as well in their own self-defense. Um, I find that mind-boggling, and as a system, when I reflected on this, it seemed to me to be highly ingenious. So I went off to my dictionary to look up the word ingen ingenuity, and it is, of course, all about devising clever ways of doing or achieving things. And it's a quality which, which is normally associated with the human brain. <coughs> Excuse me. But having watched that program, it alerted me to the fact that it is also a quality which is absolutely intrinsic in nature. If you think about natural selection, it works. It's working all the time to create clever survival solutions within the natural world. The more ingeniously any organis organism can behave, the more likely it is to survive. And as a Christian, I, of course, see God behind this. God has put mechanisms in place which make creation inherently ingenious. And humanity made in God's image also delights in exercising its ingenuity, of course, often at very humble, homely levels. Um, because I think the exercise of our ingenuity is not only a useful thing, it can also be great fun. 
I love, for example, the work of that really quirky artist and satirist, Heath Robinson. You know the chap I mean, the one who draws pictures of wacky machines that do things. Machines which are very ingenious, often wildly overcomplicated, but they often have the quality also of being very, very makeshift and homespun. There's sort of bicycle pumps and old bits of string and watering cans which have been recycled in the machine, repurposed. When I lived in the Czech Republic for a year, um, soon after the fall of communism, every home and garden I visited seemed to be just full of ingenious repurposing of simple everyday items. The people there had found it very difficult to get new stuff for years and years, and so they had relished actually becoming ingenious. They got ingenuity down to an art form. And there's an inspiring bit of repurposing in the Old Testament. That beating of swords into plowshares, of spears into pruning hooks. The prophet Isaiah sees a new world in which humanity thinks, those old lepen, weapons of war, who needs those anymore? Hmm. I wonder if we could transform them into something really useful, some, some useful farming tools, perhaps. But nowadays, of course, behind the very greatest achievements of science and technology, there lies quite awe-inspiring human ingenuity. Um, to take a very topical example, that new vaccine for COVID-19, which is looking so very promising at the moment, it isn't, so I understand, the traditional kind of vaccine, but it's an amazing new development which ingeniously exploits everything that our scientists have learned recently about genetic codes. As you're probably able to tell, I understand next to nothing about this, but I thank God for the ingenious people who do and who've made this development possible so very quickly. The internet is, of course, awash with ingenuity. Take, for example, cookie-based targeting. A little program records and analyzes your online behavior so that advertisers, for example, can show you adverts for precisely the kind of product that they predict you will need and like, which you may or may not think is very useful. Or Political parties can show targeted messages specially designed to speak to people just like you. Election campaigning nowadays is full of this sort of thing. If you're a Latino voter in Texas, you will receive a message telling you that Joe Biden is a socialist which doesn't actually happen to be true, but which is exceedingly effective in inclining you to vote for Mr. Trump. Oh dear. The bitter truth is that ingenuity, like almost every other human characteristic or activity, can be used for good purposes or it can be exploited in a much more dodgy way. Science is full of ghastly examples of depraved human ingenuity. Take the cluster bomb, for example. Who on earth thought of that? It's designed to inflict maximum damage when it's first deployed, but also to continue inflicting damage, ongoing terror actually, as those dear little bomblets wait in the soil until stands on them and they explode. How brilliantly ingenious and how utterly, utterly wicked. But then we know, of course, that humanity can find a bad use for almost anything, even those things which appear at first sight to be completely pure and innocent. Music and art can be used to manipulate people. Dictators throughout the 20th century, for example, exploited the power of music for their own miserable purposes, ramping up national fervour with music.
Religion, our cultivating of our precious relationship with God, should by definition be a blessing for humanity. But how often that too has become distorted in the way human beings practice it. So little wonder then that human ingenuity too can become a force for evil. Scripture reflects on the full range of ways in which humanity has used its ingenuity to solve problems. Think about the legendary wisdom of Solomon and his ingenious way of solving the problem when two women come to him fighting over a baby. That's my baby. No, it isn't. It's mine. Well, says Solomon, chop him in two and then you can have half each which the real mother, of course, cannot countenance, and so she gives him up. And then Solomon gives her her baby. Result, justice is done because of Solomon's ingenuity. But think also about Jacob, who at his mother's suggestion, I'm afraid, covers his arms and necks neck in goat skin. I'm sure you remember the story. So that his blind father mistakes him for his hairy brother Esau. Result? A birthright is stolen. Think in the New Testament of the ingenious technology of the friends who lower a sick man down through a roof so that Jesus can meet him and can then heal him. Result? A sick man is restored to fullness of life. So we need to take account of this and we need always to remember in our own lives and in the great enterprises of humanity why exactly God has given us this gift of ingenuity, of imagination and inventiveness. This gift is there to help us solve the problems we encounter with integrity and to help us work for the common good. And right now, of course, we so desperately need to exercise our God-given ingenuity as we face up not only to COVID, but to the global challenges of unfair trade, of climate crisis, of poverty and hunger, and so on and so forth. But I thank God that so many gifted, committed people are on the case. Human ingenuity right now gives us genuine cause for hope. Let's end with a tiny moment of prayer. Dear God, Guide us as we use our ingenuity to make life better for the whole of humanity and to protect the creation which surrounds us. God, may we find joy in our inventiveness, satisfaction when our ingenuity bears good fruit, and may we find hope in what human minds guided by you may achieve in the future. Amen. Goodbye, everyone, and may God be with you today.